Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. I am back from my business trip and back in the lab. I uh, just want to show you what's going on here at the Zero Labs. Here's a few cells that I've been working on. I've got a few projects going on and in, in between drying cycles on the glue on the uh, VSPB cell which is being rebuilt right now. Uh, I have a lot of time to kill, so I've got a few concurrent projects going at the same time. I've got the uh, spiral plate cell, I have the nickel plate cell, and I have the five plate parallel cell in a plastic tub. Uh, over here are a few circuit boards. This was the original multi-frequency pulse width modulator circuit that I designed that's been replaced by the current limiting version and this is my electronic fuel injection enhancer. So I just want to show you a little bit about the uh, the VSPB cell and how it's going going together. You can see the acrylic panels are getting glued together very nicely. I have the the bottom of the cell sealed off with uh, plates to just allow a 3 8 inch wide inlet gap inside which also limits the exposed surface area of the plate edges and then I'll be taking a little bit of goop and just sealing off the remaining edges um, down inside a little bit not closing off the opening of course but just enough to create a thin layer across this remaining gap so that uh, the exposed edges are no longer in in solution at least not directly hopefully the um, adhesion to the acrylic pieces on either side will be enough to hold it in place once it becomes dis um, detached from the plates through the process of electrolysis and it will just sit there and and stay wrapped around the edges of the plates um, without floating away. So, um, Also there will be a couple of pieces of acrylic. I don't have any to show. Well, yeah, I do. Okay, here we go. <coughs> All right, I'm going to glue some pieces of acrylic right here, and that'll act as a as a as an edge brace to keep these plates from sliding down under their own weight once they become dislodged as well, like what happened last time. So, I don't want to repeat performance of that. So I'll be making sure that this is glued very securely into place. All right. Now the next part I'm going to show you is how I'm going to make these baffle plates for the top. That's what I wanted to show you tonight. This is a little tricky, so I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on this one, how I cut the grooves for the slots and how I assemble them into place without breaking them. The first thing that I need to know is exactly where the power straps are going to intersect the edges of the baffle plate across the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hold it up against the edge of the electrodes and I'm going to take a razor knife blade and I'm going to make a little mark right onto the acrylic plate. I'm going to hold it nice and steady. It's going to go around all three electrodes Describe a little mark. And when I cut the notches for these straps, when I'm finished, I'm going to take this and just flip it over this way and slide it in. That way if there's any any unevenness in the way these plates are spaced here, they will line up precisely with the notches that I cut in the acrylic. Okay, and then I'm also going to take a Sharpie, indelible marker, and I'm going to mark this the top so that I don't get confused later on which way this is supposed to go on. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the two negative terminals on the other side and then I'm going to take my saber saw and I'm going to cut the notches going into the acrylic. I'll show you that in just a sec. Alright, I know I want 
the edges of the baffle plates to come right to the edge of the vertical acrylic panel. So what I need to do is I need to measure from this outer edge to the inside edge of the electrode strap. So I'll just take my ruler and that looks like exactly 5 eighths of an inch. So what I'll do is I'm going to take my saber saw and I'm going to cut my notches 5 eighths of an inch deep. I'm going to draw my lines on here in advance and scribe a line this way so I know exactly where 5 eighths of an inch is and just cut my notches directly up to it. Alright then, with my carpenter square I have marked off on the plates the material that I'm going to be notching out of these baffles. So I'm just going to set them and align them over top of the groove that's created by the gap in the planks that make up the top of my bench which serve as backing to keep the plastic from breaking hopefully. At least that's the plan. And we'll see how well that works. That looks pretty good. And I'll check it for thickness. Now that's a, not quite wide enough to slip around the metal. So I'm going to have to take the blade and go in and out a little bit just to widen out this gap just enough to accommodate the 49 thousandths thickness of the, of the uh, 316L stainless. So I'm going to finish up these, these notches and then I'll show you the assembly onto the VSPB cell stack. Okay, I managed to finish the first plate without breaking it miraculously. And this is how I assemble it to the top of the stack. It just slides into place. It is now flush with the outer edge. And I'm going to take an additional piece of plastic like this and run it up along the edge and another backing plate or brace along here just to give it some additional rigidity as well so that when it's hanging from the electrodes it won't pull up through the acrylic tunnel or the acrylic chimney if you will. Now I'll just do the second piece for the negative electrodes and glue them into place. The glue also passing down in between the plates will help to secure this into place. Now you'll notice I've also cut away my heat shrink tubing that was on the power straps going down to the electrodes. Um, hopefully I won't forget to put them back on before I assemble the whole cell and have to take it apart again like last time. And there you have it. Here are the completed plates, or the completed baffle plates I should say. All right. Miraculously I did not shatter any of them and they just slip into place, come right up to the edge and when they butt up against the inside of the power straps you can see how they create the 3 8 inch wide opening at the top of the plate stack as well. These openings should be more than enough to allow the gas to escape freely and circulate the fluid up through the stack rapidly enough to keep it cool as it has been all along.